morning, Marysville, and welcome to Charger Chat. I'm your host, Robin Morley, and today I'm here with three very special guests, three of our strawberry royalty. How are you guys doing this morning? Really good. 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 That's awesome. Did you have a hard time finding the school, or was it pretty easy to find? It was pretty easy to find. <laughs> I Google mapped it. <laughs> um, so if you guys want to introduce yourselves, like name, age, where you go to school, that'd be awesome. Sure. Um, my name is Callie Burkett. I go to Marysville Pilchuck High School, but I'm a running start student at Everett Community College. I'm Queen Kennedy Doty, and I am a junior at Marysville Pilchuck High School, but I take all of my classes at Everett Community College through the Running Start program. I'm Emily, well, Princess Emily, and I am an MP student. Awesome. <laughs> um, can you give me a description of your guys' title? Like, what does uh, senior royalty mean? For the senior royalty, it's juniors and seniors in high school, and we are the princesses and queen of the Strawberry Festival. So we do things in the community, and we go to different parades throughout Washington. We have one in Canada and one in Oregon as well. Wow, that's mm -hmm. really cool. Um, so what made you guys want to become a part of the Strawberry Royalty? I think for me it was wanting to be an example to younger students and also older generations because I think that a lot of times where teenagers are given a stereotype that they're all a certain way so just be an example and stand out to others. For me I think it was a way to get out into my community because sometimes I feel <coughs> detached but um, doing this has made me uh, realize what gr how great our community really is, and it's just a wonderful thing to be a part of. I mean, for me, it was um, the traditions that our festival has. I wanted to be a part of that, and also be a role model to younger kids or different generations, and um, really show that when you set goals, you know, put your mind to it, and you can reach them. And so I think that's how we all got to be where we are today. Awesome. So were you guys all friends? Like, did you know each other before, or did you guys get to know each other yeah. through the process? I knew <laughs> Emily from Spanish freshman year, and then we go to the same church. And then Callie I had English with, and um, then we had chemistry last year, and so I guess classes from school, that's how we know each other. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool that you guys like already knew each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so what was your main motivation? Did you have like a adult figure in your life or just any kind of motivation that made you want to do this? I had my mother um, who had seven children and it was for her it's really hard to support th that many kids and be able to send us off to college and it was a great way to um, not only get involved with my community but to go to college, to have this scholarship, and to be able to show others that they can do this too. It doesn't matter who they are. For me, my sister was queen uh, three years ago, and then I was part of the junior royalty program, which is sixth graders get to be princesses and get a little taste of what the festival is about. And so since then, I've always wanted to be on the senior royalty court, so my sister and I have worked hard to get me here. I just have a lot of girl cousins and I thought it would be cool for them and also for me just to, I'm the oldest one, so just to be that role model for them as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so can you explain to me the process or the steps you took to, became, or to become royalty? So we had to fill out an application first uh, that kind of introduces ourselves to the festival board and then we had to write a speech about ourselves and since our theme this year is honored traditions future visions because it's the 85th um, anniversary of the festival uh, we had to write a speech about that and then ourselves and say it and it was six times that we had to say it uh, in front of different people and we got judged and then on the pageant night we had to do the speech again uh, talent and an impromptu question and then we also had an interview with the judges so it was a long process but it was I have a lot of fun yeah <laughs> yes. um, can you tell me a little bit about the strawberry pageant like how it works and it's put together go ahead <laughs> um, so uh, 
first we got up in the morning and had our interview with the judges. So they got to know us a little bit. And then um, we did a fun dance routine with the junior royalty. And so that was just a fun thing to break the ice with the audience, get a feel for the stage. And then after that, we did speeches and our talent portion. And then um, towards the end of the pageant, we did the impromptu questions, which that was fun for me because I like when people ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, after that, we um, did the crowning portion of it, which was exciting. So the juniors got crowned first, so we had to wait a little bit longer. So it was really nerve wracking. And, um, and then we got crowned and so it was really fun. <laughs> How did it feel to win, like personally? How did you guys feel when you found out that you won? For me, it was really surprising, and I know that's kind of bad to say, but there was a lot of great girls that tried out, and um, so for me, it was just kind of, it gave me a new perspective on life. Like, I can do anything that I set my mind to, and so can everyone else. Um, for me, it was an accomplishment being able to get up there on stage and to have that practiced speech and that uh, talent that I had worked so hard on for weeks and weeks. And it just, it made me feel great to be able to get a reward out of everything that I worked towards. I think same for me, it was a really great accomplishment because it's a tradition for my family to be a part of the festival. And so being able to be a part of it again, it was really exciting. And I had to wait the longest to find out if I had one, so it was like, ha, ah, but then I got crowned, and so it was actually great. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we're going to take a short break and take a look at what it's like to be royalty. We'll be right back. Strawberry royalty. Um, so the royalty contributes a lot to the community. So what's your biggest contribution so far? Uh, well, we went to the 125th celebration of Marysville. So I think just being there and showing that we support our community and love our community was a big contribution to Marysville. So and that's the first thing. And then also we'll do different parades again throughout Washington and then some in Oregon and some in Canada and then we do in the summer the reading with royalty program for students at Pinewood Elementary and so we get to uh, read with them and just really show that we care about the kids in our community and so it gives them a little chance to meet with us because we're like the Disney princesses <laughs> to them you know, and got the crowns and the dresses and everything so that's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. So, um, what do you plan to do now that you're representing Marysville? We hope to add something to the uh, community uh, service and work. Like, we recently added the reading with kids, and we want to be able to uh, contribute more to our community. Kind of leave a legacy through our brain on the community. 
So were you guys um, personally involved with the community at all? Like did community service before you started or before you applied to be royalty? I did a lot of service through my church. And then um, since 2008, really, I've been doing things with the community because that's when my family first started um, with the royalty stuff. And so then getting involved with Strawberry Festival is mostly where I spend my time in the community. I spend my time in the community with my church often. We, uh, we work with the Helping Hands organization. And that's, it's, it's really great to be able to um, see so many people happy and to be able to work at the food bank and to help others. I also spend a lot of time at my church in MP. I'm really involved in all of the clubs we have there. I'm a part of Be the Change Club, so we're just trying to make not only the school but the community a better place, so we do some volunteering there. It's awesome. So I heard that you guys um, attend a bunch of different festivals in different cities and events. Uh, can you tell me about some of them or the biggest one that you go to? Uh, we haven't been to any yet. Oh, okay. um, our first one is I think the second yeah. week in April and it'll be the Daffodil Festival which I think that one's one of the biggest because there's four parades in one day and they're like right wow. after the other. Um, so and it's always fun because for this one um, the thing is hurry up and wait because you wake up super early in the morning, hurry up, set the float up and get your get dressed and ready to go and then you sit there and wait forever until the parade starts. <laughs> um, and it's usually for the daffodil parade it's usually raining so then you get all wet and it's cold but that makes it fun because you have the memories of being soaked um, as you're going down the parade route. And then um, so you do the first parade and then you go down the road on the float and wait for the next one and then do it again and so I think that's one of the big ones and then we also do Seafair Parade in Seattle so that's a really long day where we get to uh, have fun in Seattle and walk around in town and then that's a really big parade and it's at night so mm -hmm. our float will be all lit up and everything and look really cool for the parade. Um, so since you haven't been to any events yet which one are you looking forward to most? I think for me, I'm really looking forward to Apple Blossom in Wenatchee because I'm from Eastern Washington, so it's nice I can invite my family to come and watch me there. I'm actually looking forward to uh, the Marysville Strawberry Festival Parade because I've been there marching in it before in marching band. I've been sitting on the sidelines and I've often always seen the float go by with the princesses on it and, you know, it's just... It, it made me want to be there, be standing where they were. Mine also is our parade because um, my family is all from Marysville and so it's where all of our friends are and everything and it's always exciting to see people cheer you on from your own community. And then I'm also looking forward to the strawberry shortcake eating contest <laughs> because that's always fun. <laughs> um, so how do other cities festivals, if you've been to other cities festivals, uh, compared to our Strawberry Festival? Um, it de uh, the different festivals, their royalty programs are a little bit different. Some of them have uh, more senior royalty, so like for the Daffodil Festival, they have like 24 princesses and one queen because they have four different communities that they have um, princesses from and they pick one from each high school in those communities so they have a lot of girls um, some of them do more service projects throughout their community and we're hoping to be able to do more in our community as well uh, some parades are bigger than others and so it just depends on the city and what they have to offer that's awesome okay so we're gonna go ahead and take another short break and take a look at some cheesy pickup lines we'll be I'm ready to find a date so I'm having a problem with my math homework could you like give me your number okay you know what this is Girlfriend material. Hey there. 
Somebody should call the cops because it's illegal to look that good. No. No. But thank you. <laughs> no. 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 Ugh. Why won't no one date me? My pickup lines are so good. Hey, you from Tennessee? So you're the only 10 I see. <gasps> of course. Welcome back to Charger Chat. I'm your host again, Robin Morley, and we're back again with the Strawberry Royalty. Um, so what's it like being a princess? <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. Um, I think it's really exciting for my little sisters because they can say, oh, my sister's a princess. Um, <laughs> but I really like just being known as not necessarily having a title, but being known as an example in the community and in my school and for the younger kids. And it's really exciting to just be that role model for them. And like I said earlier, you know, we are the Disney princesses of Marysville and um, the kids look up at us and just to be the role models for them is really exciting. So how many different outfits do you have? I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Three? Uh, I think there's four. We have this outfit, and then our formal attire for on the float, and then we have a casual outfit, and then we have our travel outfit, so it's our comfy clothes in the car, yeah. <laughs> because the drives to parades are long. <laughs> you guys have like different crowns for different events, or do you have the same crown for We have event? the same crowns for every event, and then with our casual outfit, we have really cute baseball hats, that have crowns on them. <laughs> so we wear those when we're doing our casual stuff. <laughs> What's your favorite outfit? Mine's the float attire. Yeah, mine me too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because they're formals. They're pretty. Mm -hmm. So does so it look like a big, like a big poofy prom dress, or what does it look like? Um, mine is just a normal like prom dress but it's really flowy. Hers is a goddess and, dress. Yeah. <laughs> um, it has like a high neckline and a little hole, keyhole, and then um, a, is it sparkle sparkles. Sparkles. <laughs> yeah, sparkles right here. <laughs> I was like, mine is a big poofy dress, and it goes along with the honored tradition part of our festival because it was my sister's dress when she was queen. So then I get to take her to parades with me, and she gets to be up there too. And so it, mine is huge and takes up a lot of space. <laughs> Mine's a uh, silky, shiny kind of dress, and it's got jewels going along around the back and waist, and it's just really pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of sparkles all over the place. Do you guys get to pick out your dresses? So Callie's and mine were from our pageant. Um, since they were both red, we got to wear them, which is super exciting because mm -hmm. I really like mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mine's also red, and uh, we went on a shopping trip and decided that we wanted to wear the dresses that we already had instead of buying a new one. So, save us a excited. lot of time, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun being up on the float and getting to like, <laughs> see all your friends and family. Yeah. That's it's super cool. Uh, so, do you have any special? techniques you'd like to show the audience, like the perfect princess way? Well, for us on the float, we actually have little dances that we do. So, you know, it's not like dancing a whole bunch. You're just moving around. So there's no real, like, princess way because we're just really excited, <laughs> waving and smiling and dancing to the music. And so we don't have, like, formal waves. <laughs> <laughs> we're fun princesses yes, and fun yeah. queens. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, in your in your opinion, uh, what constitutes true beauty? This is my favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> I think what constitutes true beauty is really being yourself and not having others peer pressure you to change and not trying to be like a people pleaser necessarily, but staying true to yourself and what you believe in and always having a smile. And, <laughs> and I could add on to that saying, um, that Oscar Wilde said that be yourself, everybody else is already taken. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, do you have any words to say for those out there who are struggling with the concept of beauty? I think really just embracing who you are because everyone is your own individual and 
you were made to shine just the way you know you can and so don't try to be like someone else because like the quote you know someone else has already taken you are you and that's all you should be um so what makes this all worth it to you for me it's getting to see the smiles of everyone in the crowd and knowing that there's people out there that are cheering them on because I think that's one of our biggest jobs is to cheer the community on because that's what they're doing for us. So just seeing all those pretty smiles. <laughs> I think another thing to add is the friendships that we make um, and really connecting with other communities and uh, shining our light to other people and showing them, you know, here's how we are and you know, here we are to shine and you know, really want to connect with other people. For me, it's to stand as an example for those who believe that they wouldn't be able to do this, uh, whether it be school or medical conditions, because I've struggled through all of that, and here I am with a little support, and I've been able to come here and make wonderful new friends. So do you guys feel like you've already set an example for kids in Marysville? I think what uh, one of the examples we've set is um, to set goals, and then work hard to reach them because our goal was to be on the court to shine and to connect with our community and make friends and we all worked really hard to get to where we are today and I think that really showed to the kids in our community. That's really great. You guys are actually super awesome. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So are you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take one final break and take a look at how to lose a girl. We'll be right back. <laughs> Marysville. I'm here again with the lovely Strawberry Royalty. So um, I'm really excited for this year's Strawberry Festival because I know I go every year to the carnival and to the food at Totem and then I always go and watch the parade. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, what to expect at this year's Strawberry Festival? I think what to expect is a big celebration because it is the 85th year of our Strawberry Festival. So lots of fun and uh, ways to connect with other people in the community. We have a kids day in the park and so that's where the kids can come and jump on bouncy houses and talk with us and uh, we have our grand parade at the end with the grand fireworks show and lots of fun in between. Do you guys know um, the, the date of the Strawberry Festival? Uh, it's always the third week in June so it's the festival week and then so I think the parade is the 18th of June because the parade is always on the Saturday. Awesome. Um, so what are you looking forward to most during the Strawberry Festival? <laughs> Mine's the Strawberry Shortcake <laughs> Eating Contest because we um, get to challenge other royalty from other festivals that come to our festival and we get to challenge them to our Strawberry Shortcake Eating Contest and we really want to win. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think I'm excited for that. Uh, mine's the float to be able to be up there on the float and to see all of my communities standing there and watching. 
mine would have to be the kids' day because I just love little kids and getting to play with them. I think that I am really excited for bouncy houses too. So <laughs> just getting to play with them and having an excuse not to just look weird on the bouncy house by ourselves. Yep. <laughs> So for the strawberry shortcake eating contest, um, how many times have you guys competed in it? Um, I've, <laughs> I've done it a couple of times and it's a lot of fun because it's one of those things where it's not your typical princess thing that you do because it's no hands so it's like strawberries all over your face and whipped cream and just like it's everywhere so that makes it fun. Um, but. So I've done it a couple of times. Yeah. Haven't won yet, <laughs> but uh, I've done it. <laughs> I haven't done it at all, but I was in a pie eating contest, oh, so yeah. that's yeah. pretty good it's pretty close. experience. Yeah. We did the pie eating contest at the uh, 125th celebration. So and it was like half a pie that we had to eat. Or no, it, it was, was a whole pie. pie. It was hard. Pie. <laughs> the kids got half a pie, and we were like, no, we're kids too. We want the <laughs> half a pie. And we had to eat the whole yeah. pie. I think a little kid beat us. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> I haven't actually participated in any uh, contests like that. <laughs> so. Are you planning on participating um, this year? Not really, because I'm on a specific diet mm -hmm. for medical issues. Oh, okay. Um, so, what are the requirements to become a member of the Strawberry Royalty? Smiles. I'm just kidding. Yeah, lots of smiles. <laughs> um, I think, um, you know, just keeping your grades up is one of them. So, if you, you know, you're a good student, uh, that's a requirement. And then just being friendly and outgoing and willing to work out in your community. Requirements that they would like royalty to have. <laughs> awesome. So, how big of a commitment is it? Well, it takes over our whole summer, mm -hmm. so it's a pretty big commitment. Um, we have parades um, pretty much every weekend that we go to. Uh, we do trade off with our junior royalty, who are sixth graders, uh, so they do parades also. So it gives us a little break from all the crazy <laughs> schedules. And we, um, the thing in the summer with the little kids at Pinot Elementary, that's reading with them every week on Wednesdays. So we have something at least once a week that we do in the summertime. So And the festival year is all year round. So we're crowned in March and then we're not done until the next year in March. And uh, we have parades all the way up until December. And so it's, it's a lot of fun, but it is a lot of work. <laughs> But it's all worth it. Mm, absolutely. Definitely. So what are the benefits of it? So I heard you guys get a scholarship. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So for Queen, you get a $5,000 scholarship. And then there's also a $500 scholarship for the Miss Congeniality, which is voted on by the royalty candidates. So it's like, who's the most helpful and outgoing and um, that kind of a thing. And then the princesses get a $3,500 yeah, yeah. scholarship. Oh, that's amazing. So, and it's to go towards whatever school that we choose, so, which is nice, because then you know, we still get to pick where we want to go with our mm -hmm. class. That's awesome. So we are um, running out of time, but is there any shout outs you'd like to give to the audience or words of wisdom? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, you know, always, be yourself and shine your light through whatever you do. It's my little shout out there. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, don't ever be afraid to be yourself because like Callie said that everyone else is already taken and I think being true to yourself is one of the most important things in life and not trying to change for other people. And when you are, you'll start to see yourself as more beautiful, not just on the not inward beauty but also outward beauty and it will it will help you and your community and it help you to bring others up and to be an example for them too. Yeah I have to say you guys are a truly amazing example <laughs> for our community. Um, unfortunately that's all the time we have so I really want to thank you guys for uh, coming on the show and telling us a little bit more about you guys and who you are and what you do. Thank you Thanks for having us. us. <laughs> no problem. 
Okay, so um, I know I'm excited to go to the Strawberry Festival. So everybody in Marysville that's watching better go. So thank you for watching. <laughs>